All right, welcome back to Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Glad you're along, 2.30 to the time. Well, this Saturday, uh, there will be tons of people in D.C., Washington, D.C., the March for Our Lives event uh, to call for gun control in an effort to end. Basically, what, what has happened here, the government at every level, city, county, state, and federal, has done a very good job of raising a couple generations to think that somehow government is uh, your savior, somehow the government is going to be able to keep you safe, somehow the government uh, is the answer to all the problems. Well, you and I that have some life experience know that's simply not the case. Younger people don't. So they're being used politically. Um, But something else is going on. Um, This Palm Sunday night, March 25th, thousands will be in Dallas. Uh, and be publicly declaring something. I'm going to let uh, the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Dr. Robert Jeffress, uh, which you know, I mean, he, his reputation precedes him. Pastor, how you doing? Great, Rick. Appreciate your having me on. You bet. You, uh, you are here to tell us that, uh, you know, there's something else going on bet- besides an effort and futility in D.C. There's something going on here, right? Right. This Sunday night, we're inviting Christians from all over the Metroplex to join us at First Baptist Dallas in front of the fountain, and we are going to have what we're calling a March for Eternal Life. Thousands of us will be marching through the streets of downtown Dallas, carrying an illuminated cross on this Palm Sunday night, all the way to Clyde Warren Park, where we'll have a brief service down there. And what we're doing, Rick, is proclaiming that we believe that the ultimate hope for America is faith in Jesus Christ. And you referenced the March for Our Lives, marches taking place all over the country on Saturday for gun control. We're not against that. Perhaps there's a need to look at gun control laws and background checks. But what we're saying is, if that's all we do as America, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a cancerous tumor. It doesn't deal with the root problem. We can only change Americans' behavior when we change their hearts, and that's what the gospel is all about. So this is in no way a protest against what's happening Saturday, but it's saying it's not the full or even the most important piece of the puzzle. Faith in Jesus Christ is what will change our country's uh, hearts and that's what will change our behavior as well. Well, also, uh, Pastor Jeffress, it was Pence, uh, Vice President Pence, uh, there have been a few that uh, people have outwardly and publicly, with evidently you know, no concern about what the backlash would be, um, mocked their faith and their relationship yeah. with Christ. And I'm thinking, you know, I, re- I know the Scripture, turn the other cheek, and I understand that. But at some point, you have to draw a line and say, no, I will not ignore or uh, not proclaim my faith. I mean, that's I think too many people say, well, I'm not supposed to say anything. Um, You know, you have to look at this pragmatically and say, wait a minute, you can't come out and call somebody crazy uh, for 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 talking to Christ. Right. Yeah, that's right, Rick. And that that's part of an even bigger narrative of what's been happening in this country for the last 70 years. For the last 70 years, secularists have been on a crusade to try to eliminate the acknowledgement of God from the public square. Secularists have said, we believe as a country we can be good without God. Well, I'll say that has been a dismal failure in our country. And But during this attempt, there's been an attempt to shame Christians, like you mentioned, uh, uh, threaten them, shaming them for mentioning their faith in the public square. And what I read in Scripture is the church is never to be on the defensive. We're to be on the offensive. We ought to be proudly proclaiming, not because we're mad, but because we're happy in the Lord. We ought to be saying we believe that this is a a, a relationship with Jesus Christ that's not only changed our life, it can change America as well. And so that's what this is going to be Sunday night. Uh, this isn't a funeral dirt. We've got a Dixieland band that will lead the procession down to Clyde Warren Park. And this is for anybody and everybody who's not ashamed to say that they're a Christian to join in with us. You know, I, I, got, uh, I get, uh, well, just like you, I'm sure, hundreds of emails a day. And somebody took exception with something I said yesterday. 
Um, and I don't even recall the, the conversation, but I said, you know, I'm, I'm a little over six foot, about 235. You know, I've, uh, you know, I fought tournament karate for a number of years when I was younger and I, I ride motorcycles and horses and, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think I'm pretty, pretty strong. But I'm never as strong as when I hit my knees and, uh, you know, give credence where credence is due to um, my creator. I'm never as strong as when I'm on my knees uh, to God. And somebody said, well, Rick, I can be strong without God. Yeah, you can. But you will experience a strength you've never known once you have faith in God and you hit your knees to pray to him. And I, I just couldn't get that, that message across. Well, you're absolutely right, and that's true for us personally. It's true for us as a nation. And, you know, we've got to quit allowing the secularists to revise the history of America. For the first 160 years of our nation's history, our court system unashamedly said America is a Christian nation. This nation was founded on Christian principles. That doesn't mean we don't welcome people of all faiths or no faiths, but without hesitation, our founders said, our Supreme Court said, in ruling after ruling, America is a Christian nation. And Sunday night's an opportunity for us to say, again, that we believe that the only hope for this country is turning back to God instead of continually turning away from him. And that's the long term. You know, someone asked me about school shootings, and I said, well, it's a two-phase situation as I see it. Uh, The first phase, put uniformed police officers in school, uh, limit the ingress and egress. Um, But that's, you know, that's a short-term fix. And then you need to return to biblical principles. And, well, what if uh, I'm Jewish or what if I'm Hindu or what if I'm Muslim or what if I'm this? If you look at biblical principles, uh, they work for all theologies. Yes, Yes, and that's why I appreciate what you've done on Facebook and your call for our country to come back to God. And and look, you know, the acknowledgement of God and that we're accountable to him is the beginning place to turn this country around. The Russian writer Dostoevsky said, without God, everything is permissible. And that's why I think we're seeing just the downward spiral in our country, increased violence, immorality. When you take God out of the equation, why not do what you want to? Uh, why not act any way you choose to act? I think the teaching of the real God to whom we're all accountable is the beginning place. And again, this isn't strange, Rick. I mean, for the first 160 years, I mean, our school children used the New England primer that had children memorizing the Ten Commandments, had them uh, 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 memorizing verses of Scripture. And what I always ask these pinheads from the ACLU that I debate on Fox (laughs) is, why is it that the Supreme Court said 118 years ago, of course this is permissible, but now they've declared that even posting the Ten Commandments is unconstitutional. Did the Constitution change? Of course not. What has happened is we've allowed the liberals and the secularists to pervert our Constitution into something our founders never intended. Or, uh, in some cases, they simply skim over it in education classes, don't really teach the Constitution. And that's like I say, you know, when you talk to younger people about the Constitution, you get the deer in the headlight looks. Uh, well, you can't miss something you never knew you had. Um, that's why the Constitution is important, Declaration of Independence. I mean, um, I do a, a thing on, on the radio about the Bill of Rights, first 10 amendments to the Constitution, which are written specifically for us, and people had no clue what it even was. So, uh, listen, we could, you and I could talk for hours, I know. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Robert, uh, Robert Jeffress, senior pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas, tell folks once again what's going to happen this Palm Sunday night, March right. 25th. Palm Sunday, this Sunday night at 7.30, the March for Eternal Life. It starts at the fountain in front of First Baptist Dallas and goes to Clyde Warren Park. If Christians would like to come earlier at 6 o'clock, we've got a great gospel concert with Sandy Patty, famed gospel artist, our choir and orchestra, and a communion service. But the march begins at 7.30. All right, Pastor, it's always a pleasure. You know that. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me, Rick. All right. So uh, we'll uh, get that up on the website. So if you're driving, uh, it's Palm Sunday night. You can't miss that. Um, And uh, 
if you want to take part, just just show up. That's all you have to do. 2.43 the time. We're going to step aside, check your afternoon drive, and back with your calls in the Court of Public Opinion on News Talk 820 WBAP.